Hi everyone, I wanted to show you today what I did on Yule and one of the little things I did on Yule was I made a bunch of candles and what I did is I collected these jars that I wanted to recycle so this is a candle that I've had that's burnt down the wick's gone pretty much but the wax is still left um, an old pepper shaker jar um, that's an old candle jar that's now empty and cleaned out these are baby food jars um, if you if you use a lot of baby food jars keep them and turn them into candles these are mini jam jars and this is from a pepper grinder you, you know the ones where it's like a jar with pepper in and it's got the grinder on the end um, I washed all the um, jars and if you just leave them soaking in um, hot soapy water you know with fair, fairy liquid or something in um, the labels all just fall off and you end up with a lovely clean clean jar <coughs> so I bought a bunch, I've bought my big pillar mould, um, a bunch of wax and some wicks. I've got paraffin wax there just because that was the cheapest one at, at the time, but you can get soy wax to use as candles, little uh, wick holders and wicks and some little packs of candle dye. These are just like coloured flakes and you literally stick like two flakes in and it dyes the, uh, the whole candle. So first of all, what I did was take my little metal pot. Obviously, you use whatever you use to melt the wax in is something that you will not use for food. Um, this is a separate little pot I bought that I got from the pound shop um, just to use for making candles. I won't use it for anything to do with food because obviously you don't want paraffin wax all over your cooking utensils and stuff. Um, and I also sacrificed a small spoon um, for the same job as well. Um, but they will just be used from now on for candle making. So get all your jars nice and ready that you're going to use. And then you need to prepare your uh, wicks. So they're coming two thicknesses. I think the first one was like one mil and the other one, like about one mil and the other one's two millimetres, I think, in width. Um, and the thinner one I'm going to use for the smaller jars and tall thin jars. And then the thicker cord... Um, I will use for the baby jar candles and for my big pillar candle. So the first thing you need to do is, if like me you've managed to tie a big knot in it, is unravel your wick. Because I've used this before and then just stuffed it back in the bag. Obviously not very carefully. So once you've got your piece of wick, what you need to do is get a wick holder and... These are fairly cheap, you just buy a big bunch of them. I've bought about 100 of them. Um, and what you need to do is get a pair of pliers once you've threaded it through. And you pinch the end and that keeps the wick in place and stops it escaping. And then place it in the jar and cut it so it's about... You want it so it's about a centimetre or two higher than the jar because you need enough wick... So you can clip it with something to hold it in place as it sets. Because um, you'll trim the wick down later on to make it the right size before you actually light the candle. Um, but it just helps if you have it so it sticks out the jar. Um, so that you can actually um, use something to hold it in place. I haven't got any uh, wick holder things. Um, so I use pegs. And you'll see I've got a whole bunch of pegs I use afterwards. Um, to hold them in place um, if the jars are not very wide I find pegs work perfectly well because you can thread the wax through the spring of the peg or clip the wax with the peg and then balance that across the top of the jar and it holds the wick straight while it's setting it's just mas it's just basically to make sure the wick's not going to sort of fall to the side of the jar as the wax sets so what I did first of all, obviously, is prepared a bunch of wicks and just um, threaded the wick through the wick keepers, the wick holders, and then measured them against the jars and cut them to size. Um, for the larger wick, I found it was a bit of a pain threading it through the wick holder, but I found that um, if you dip the end of the wick in the wax and then pinch it with your fingers as it sets you can actually make the end taper off a bit so it's thinner so you can get it through the um, wick holders so that's what I'm doing here 
and then it's easier to thread through. Is this where I've put the wax on? Yeah. So as you can see, the wick, the thicker wick goes through quite easily once it's coated in wax just to hold all those fibres in place. I used the thicker uh, wick for the baby jar candles and for this old candle jar and also for my big pillar candle later on. Um, I didn't film using the pillar, big pillar candle mould, um, by the way. Good job I didn't because it was a disaster. I didn't realise there's a hole in the bottom because the mould is upside down, obviously, in the, where the top of the candle is so you can get the shape at the top. It comes down as like a funnel at the, at the bottom of the mould and then there's a hole in the middle where you thread the wick through. Well, I didn't realise that. So the first time I poured any wax into the mould, it all just dribbled out all over my work surface. Um, and took me ages to clean up, um, so it's a good job I didn't film that. I found out with the um, pillar candle moulds, what you need to do is thread the wax through the bottom, uh, the wick through the bottom first, seal it in with wax, um, and then put a thin layer of wax at the bottom of the mould, just to make sure the whole thing's coated like a cap of wax at the bottom of the mould. And then I found then you can fill the mould up with the hot wax and fill it up. Um, never use one of those moulds before because normally I do jars, so never mind. It's it's something I learned because unfortunately the moulds don't come with instructions, so never mind. One little tip I found as well is if you want the candles to cool very quickly um, with the plastic mould, I wouldn't do it with the glass ones, but with the plastic mould, you can sit the plastic mould in a bucket of cold water. Um, obviously you have to hold it. Um, or dip it in a bucket of water as you've poured the first bit of wax in. That makes sure that that end piece of wax is nice and solidified so it won't melt um, as quickly. So hopefully it doesn't sort of start to melt at the end and dribble out again. And I found that worked really well. Here at this stage what I'm doing now is pre-dipping the wicks because you, if you just put the wicks in as they are in the wax, because they'll absorb some of the wax, they can actually make the candle sort of sink in the middle and it looks a bit weird. Um, so what you do is you dip the wick into the wax a couple of times. Um, this helps you to straighten it out as well and it holds its shape a lot better once there's a layer of wax on it. And I find that helps to um, helps with stability and helps the wax the wick stay upright as the wax is cooling. As you can see here, I'm dip, dipping it in and then after a couple of seconds, because it, it's only a thin layer of wax, it cools really quickly. So you can just use your fingers just to straighten out the wick and make it so it's going to stay in place. Um, when you do do that, give it a few more seconds before you put it in the jar, because I did put them in the jar a bit quick. Um, let them sort of cool for another second or two so they're nice and firm before putting them into the jars, just to make sure they hold their shape a lot better. They will bend slightly with um, when you pour in the, the, the hot layer of um, wax, but not so bad. Not as bad as if it was like just the fresh cord, because it'll just all end up in a big knot at the bottom of the jar if you're not careful. So as you can see, I pre-dipped all of the wicks and made sure they were nicely coated so that they would hold their shape and then place them in their jars. And then the next step is to fix the uh, wick holder into the bottom of the jar. Um, some people use like glue and stuff, but I found it a lot easier to just use the wax itself. So what I do is, first of all, I dip it into the wax like so, and then take a teaspoon of wax into the small jars, just pour it in, and then place the wick in position and that will hold the wick um, in the middle of the candle as you pour the rest of the wax in later on. So I prepared all the candles that way and then what I find is sometimes I'll just put a spoon or two in of wax and make sure that that wick holder's in place before I pour any more wax in. Here I'm just using the spoon just to press down the wick holder in the base of the jar. Um, the bigger the jar, the more spoons of wax you'll need just to um, cover the bottom. And then just hold the wick in place for a few seconds. And as you can see, that's now in the middle of the jar pretty much. 
and it will hold it in place. And I did that, as you can see, for all the jars. For the big jar that's already got some wax in it from a previous candle, what I did is I took a big pan of boiling water and stood that jar in the big pan of boiling water until the wax melted. Then I removed the old wick holder and the little burnt stump of wick. And then into that candle, I poured more of the paraffin wax beads um, so they would melt and that mixed it all together and that refilled that big candle jar. And if you get anything, use a glass work, um, use a glass chopping board like I do, by the way, because the second the wax hits it because it's cold, it solidifies and also it comes off easy. Literally, you just um, scrape it with a spoon and it just pops off the glass and then you can put it back into your um, saucepan to remelt the wax. It just makes it a lot easier to clean up because otherwise you've got to try and scrape it off a work surface, which is a nightmare. Whereas at least with a glass chopping board, you can scrape off the wax and as you, any residue, you just pour boiling water over it to remove. But obviously make sure you've removed as much wax as possible off your um, work surface because you don't want to uh, block your sink with wax. For this tall jar, because it's quite skinny, and I just wanted to make sure that the, I poured in some of the wax with my spoon, first of all. I did, I think, pour it in in a bit. Yeah, I did pour it in in a bit. I did find this was quite hard to pour from this um, this little pot, but it worked all right for this first one. And as you can see, I'm just holding the wick in place for a bit. And then I will um, fiddle about and clip it in place with um, pegs. This peg was not the right peg to use. I should have used my straight pegs, which I did change it to a straight peg later on. But what you do is you just clip the wick, clip the wick into the peg and then leave the peg balancing across the top of the jar. I find that works perfectly well as a wick, a wick holder while it sets. My other, my other pegs are better, they're straighter. Never mind. This just happens to be in the first peg I pick up, so that's why it's a bit of a pain. Uh, what I did in the end is that centre hole, I threaded the wick through there and then just left the peg balancing across the top of the jar. I did it that way. And then what you do is you leave your pegs to set. and um, You leave your candles with the pegs on to set. As you can see, there's some there with the pegs still on. Once the wax is sort of half solidified, you can take the pegs off, it's fine. And as you can see, there's my big pillar candle setting. So that's it. That's how to recycle jars to make your own candles. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.